Kearns at Lawrence Tech and welcome to yet another step in our adventurous journey into the world of Simulink. Well, maybe not that adventurous, but anyhow a journey. Uh, today we're going to talk about transfer functions and state space blocks as alternate ways to implement this little spring mass damper you see bouncing around. Uh, the primitive blocks we used in the previous video and we'll also touch on some subsystem stuff. So let's get moving. So here's my spring mass damper, uh, every mechanical engineer's favorite thing. Assume that I have a spring constant equal to 4, a damping coefficient equal to 0.1, some sine wave uh, as my input, I'll have a mass equal to 2, those are kilograms here, which you should be substitute in the uh, equations for mass times acceleration, the force, and the forces from the damper and the spring. So that is the equation we want to implement. Rearrange that a bit into this form, and that's similar to the form that I showed you last time. Uh, if we solved it for x double dot, then it would be easy to put in Simulink with our primitive blocks, which I've actually done here, and there's just what it ends up look, looking like. So, you know, pause the video, check my math, uh, make sure that, that, you know, this model represents that equation if you're not clear, you know, and how would you do that in Simulink. I encourage you to take notes and pause where you need to and, and not get lost in why did he do that. You know, take the time to figure it out. I think it'll help you. You can do the Laplace transform of this if you recall, you know, the Laplace transform of second derivative of x is s squared times x of s. The second derivative of x dot is s times x of s, and we have that constant b over m, and we're ignoring initial conditions since we're headed for a transfer function, and then trans the transform of x is just x of s, and we have f of s as our transform for the force. Arrange that to say that my output x of s as a function of the force f of s, or our input f of s, is our transfer function. We'll call that gp of s, and it's equal to this quantity right here. And what that means is, in my block diagram, if I have some f of s, some force, and I input that into a block, which we will call gp of s, I will get as an output x of s. Okay. Uh, one little quirky thing about, well, quirky or convenient, how, depending on how you want to look at it, in Simulink, I can take f of t, my force as a function of t, give, turn, uh, send that to my transfer function, and my output will be x of t. Okay, so it's kind of doing the transform, inverse transform things as it goes which means that I can do a time-based simulation using the Laplace domain representation of our blocks, which is rather convenient. So let's hop into Simulink and add this block in and see what it looks like. Model with the primitive implementation. Let's open up our library browser. I'm going to go to Continuous, and I'm going to pull in the transfer function block. and I will double click on that and I need a numerator and denominator. Let me move this over here and you can see my numerator is 1 over m on my slide there. And my denominator in descending powers of s, I'm going to start with the highest power of s, so I have 1 times s squared I have b over m times s, and I have k over m for my denominator, and I'm going to click OK. And now I have a, yeah, we'll stretch it out just a little bit so we can read what it says. So I have my transfer function, I have m, b, and k defined in 
Simulink, and you can see on the icon here, it's added in the S's for us. So I will take this, connect it up to my sine wave. Uh, one more input, so I'm going to go to View, Configuration Properties. I'm going to give it three ports. Okay, and View I could have done layout in the beginning, so one, two, three, like that. So I've got three ports there, and I'm going to connect my transfer function to the third port. And I'm going to label the signal TF out. So I can distinguish it from the other signals. And everything else should be good, so let's run it. And here we go. In my scope, I have my input sine wave. I have a kind of a funky looking output, the X, which is this output for my primitive blocks. And I have my output for my transfer function. And uh, yeah, I'll buy that. We got the same thing. So I can take all of those primitive blocks and just, if I'm willing to do the math up front, uh, replace them with a simple transfer function block for a linear time invariant system. Okay, And I should point out uh, linear time invariant means just that. It's a linear system. We're assuming it's linear. It's time invariant. It doesn't change. You know, the mass doesn't change. The damping doesn't change. The spring constant, none of those change with time. Okay. When you're working in MATLAB, they'll use the abbreviation LTI over and over again for linear time invariant. So get used to that one. Okay. Let's get back to this. I promised you the state space representation. So what is state space? Well, it's a method where we describe our system, our linear time invariant system typically, as a set of first order differential equations in matrix form. And this is the standard form here, okay, where we have a set of states Q, we have an input U, We have the derivative of the states, call it states dot, less writing. Uh, we have some output. And we have these matrices A, B, C, D, D, which contain the coefficients of our first order differential equations. So let's look at our example. My equation from before, okay, just copied that straight from the other slide. And my first job here is to uh, decide what I'm going to pick for states. What is a state? And how many states are there? Well, this is a second order differential equation. I'm going to really need two states to describe the function. I've got two energy storage things. I've got a mass. I've got a spring. That kind of leads me to at least two states. It's a second order differential equation. That kind of leads me to a couple states. Uh, and the states are not unique. Uh, in theory, I could pick any number of variables. But in the spring mass damper system, there's some natural states, if you would, or obvious states. Um, since I have everything as a function of x and its derivatives, and I want to express this in terms of states and their derivatives. That would imply I want something to do with x. And I want my highest derivative to go in here in my derivative column. So that would be my highest derivative, leaving x dot and x as my states. So I can say that my states q1 and q2 are going to be x and x dot. That means my, the derivatives of the states, q1 dot is x dot, q2 dot is x double dot, okay? So I can rewrite my equations a little bit. I can say that, um, well, if I take the solve for x double dot here, x double dot equals minus k over m times x minus b over m x dot plus 1 over m f of t. That's just rearranging a little bit. And my x double dot 
I said is Q2 dot. Okay, expression for Q1 dot dot is equal to uh, so that in our matrix form it's 0 times x plus 1 times x dot plus 0 times f of t. And now all I have to do is write this out as a couple of matrices. So I can say that x double dot as my derivatives of my vectors equals my A matrix, whatever that is, which is x and x dot for my states, plus my B matrix times f of t. And I just fill in the blanks here. Um, x dot is 0 times x, 1 times x dot, 0, 1. If you remember your matrix algebra, this should be straightforward. If not, uh, you probably have to review. My x double dot, let me write that a little better. Double dot is minus k over mx minus b over mx dot and 1 over m. Oops, I forgot the 0 up there in the first line. The 0 for my x dot, it's 0 times f of t, and x double dot is 1 over m times f of t. So that is my A matrix, my B matrix. That's the first line there. Okay, I hope that follows. My output, well, we haven't specified what we want for an output. Let's just assume our output is is x. So y as our output is equal to x equals um, 1, 0, our C matrix, times x, x dot, our states, plus 0 times f of t, our forcing input. Okay? And that's our D matrix. So that is our system in state space form. Let's hop back into MATLAB out this transfer function block just so everything fits nicely and I'm going to come back in here in my Simulink browser and grab my state space block. Slide here to the right. I'm going to use arrow keys and arrow it back and it connects up nicely and you can see that uh, it's the icon on it is you know x dot equals ax plus bu so that kind of gives you your clue double click and my parameters what is my a matrix well I could again create an a matrix in the MATLAB workspace or I can enter it here uh, in this case I'm going to enter it here so I'm going to say that my a matrix the first row is 0 1 semicolon start the second row minus and I sh I'll put commas in here 0, 1, semicolon, second row, minus k o over m, comma, minus b over m, close brackets, so that's my A matrix. My B matrix is 0, semicolon, 1, first row 0, second row is 1, my C matrix is 1, 0, close bracket, and my D matrix is just plain 0. I guess I didn't need to put it in brackets. Initial conditions, we have the option for that. Um, we don't need to do it. And of course, up here at the top, they show you the form of that model. OK. Oops, let me slip that up here. OK. And that should match what we have. Let's, let's run this. And I'll double click on the scope. And I have the wrong name here. TF out is really state space. But again, we've matched up what we intended to do. OK? So however we do it, transfer function, state space, primitive blocks, we can get the same result. And I wanted to show you one more thing. Let me open this up a bit, slide this down out of my way. Um, 
you know, this is at the bottom here is nicely contained in one block, and here I've got this whole bunch of blocks. Um, ideally, I would have written the equation for that too. I didn't in this case. Um, but what I can do, sometimes it helps us to neaten up our picture. If I high, drag and highlight a bunch of things, right click on one of them, and create subsystem from selection, I've collapsed collapsed this into a subsystem block. I can rename that subsystem is the primitive I'm just going to call it prim. And we have an input here. Um, I'm, this still needs a label. This is my Y or U. What did I call it? I don't remember. U. And if I go double click into my thing I can change the name of that input into U in, and I'll double click on this one, and I will use a pair of angle brackets, and then just click somewhere else, and it inherits the name from above. Okay, so it inherits, and this is my implementation of that system in primitive form. Uh, it saved the la label X. I'm going to change that to be X out. I like to label the imports and outports relevant to the name that the variable has. That way if things don't quite hook up right, you can see that. And using the automatic propagation of the names, you know, if I had a different name other than you or input or whatever I picked, um, it would show up there and that would be a clue that something's wrong. I can click on the spring mass damper up here to go up a level or I just hit escape and uh, you can see that the block has changed a little bit so I've got the U in, the X out. Double click on that line, I'll use my two angle brackets, click somewhere else and that shows me that I've indeed connected to X and if I run it one more time nothing's changed. I've just kinda rearranged my model um, when model get, models get big and complicated, dividing it up into subsystems and organizing it will help clean things up for you, keep your models readable. Uh, you know, if you try to put a big model all on one level, it's just a disaster to look at and follow. So this helps you organize. Okay, so the next uh, in this series, we'll talk about a time varying system of something more complicated. I'm thinking I'll do the, the uh, model rocket example over again. That's We'll break that up into pieces this time. And uh, But that ends this video. I hope you found that useful. Thanks for tuning in and we'll catch you on the flip side.